And there we go again, guys. It's again G League. Same teams. C Deck versus LGD. We have the same casters. I have Flamogo and Grandis We And it's 2 2. I could say, I told you so, but nobody wanted to believe me. Everybody said, LGD is winning. No, C Deck is winning. The chat was completely split in like pretty much two parties, but I was well aware that this might actually go into full five games um you already noticed like the other tournaments are like even postponing their games right now because of this so guys don't worry nothing is running away nothing is running parallelly we are in game number five this is the decider whoever wins here won it all so let's see who brings it home and to start out this draft, we're going to see Tuskalus Shrek and Dying Queen of Pain banned out with a first pick Bounty Hunter for Seadak and a Gyrocopter Shadow Fiend for LGD. Boy, do they love their Shadow Fiend. Lena will follow up the Bounty for Seadak. Yep, Bounty Hunter again. Actually, last game, he was not too much of a great factor in, in those games. I think the initiations and everything came down to uh, the DK. Uh, the Shadow Fiend has a very, very decent farm. And the Bounty Hunter as such, yes, there were a lot of track kills, but not that many. Because they went for these all-out fights. It was like either hell or heaven. There was nothing else in between. There was barely any like, okay, we go for that gang, for that gang. The smokes mostly failed because both teams had insanely well-placed wards in positions where sentries didn't get them, etc., etc. And also the Bounty got caught off quite quite a lot. They get a Lina on top of that, so that might be a call in or might be not who who, who knows Gyrocopter and Shadow Fiend well no doubt both of them are cores so LTD punching them through going for the cores again and now it comes a very interesting part they ban out the Queen of Pain instead of the clockwork and C deck doesn't react to it usually the clockwork is 100% ban in the Chinese scene but this time they get it through so they have two of the strongest cores at the moment and a very very strong offliner so I like this draft already yeah, it's looking pretty good for them. In days of old, it would have been Zhao Aid's clockwork, and that would have been something to see, but should be yet for Yao uh, this game around for LGD. So uh, let's see how C Deck are going to react to this. We are probably going to see the Lina played in the mid roll, leaving them fairly open when it comes to this draft, but already the raw power level of LGDs here is just pretty much through the roof. If they want another support, Winter Wyvern could be decent, but. Uh, Wyvern is prone to just getting jumped or the amount of magic burst coming out from LGD can almost completely bypass the cold embrace. Witch dog. Yeah, pretty much. They they pick a witch dog directly on top of it, so that's very interesting. Now, yes, I can I can say it totally went to Wyvern, even coming for the LG LGD side right now. Witch dog uh can't really do much against cold embrace, physical damage, not piercing, so hmm. I would say yes. I would totally say yes. Let's let's be let's just be a winter vibrant. Even though the winter virus we saw so far, they have not been doing that great. Like we had some really strong ones in ESCC. We had in the early games uh, today. We had some some nice winter vibrant plays, but the last two were not really impressive. They they got taken down really really fast out of position. The finger of the line really helped there. They're gonna go for the Rubik instead, uh, which is again. Uh, once more, I think for the third time now, a nice counter to Bounty Hunter uh, to steal that. Of course, for the Lina Laguna played for the Witch Dog Ultimate, the Rubik might also be very interesting if he managed to steal that. Yeah, for sure. At the moment, um, I'm quite liking LGD's lineup in general, but what hero is going to, I don't know, mesh together with C Dex first three? At the moment, they're going to need something to go mid up against uh, LGD's heroes, and maybe they just need some sort of laning powerhouse, maybe even considering something like Viper. Yeah, I mean, they, they if you remember, like, uh, I think two drafts ago, they, they wanted to go for, like, something similar like this, and then a tanky core, and LGD had pretty much the same thought, and they banned out the Viper, and then they went for DK instead, uh, which kind of worked out. The problem is where does the damage come from? Like I'm I'm talking about 30 minutes plus. Right now C Deck is going for something that does not look very late game-ish to me. Uh, that means it has to come through with the cores. But we have a nice clockwork initiation. We have the Rubik later with a proper initiation. We have two big fat BKB cores that can really just stand their ground. Gyrocopter early game potential with like about 60% uh 
magic damage that comes out before he even starts to do physical damage. And then if later the physical kicks in, then who's going to stop those two cores? So you can really just hope that c -Deck right now picks the right cores, makes the right plays early game till minute 15, 20, 25 to... I don't know, kind of suppress the farm of Jericopter and Shadow Fiend. Spirit Breaker is, is one thing, yes, that can actually work out as in like roaming on them. But you have the Clockwork, he can protect himself against the Spirit Breaker easily. A Rubik, if he has vision on Spirit Breaker, just telekinesis you. The Jarcopter, if you single target charge him, you just get Rocket Barrage full time in your face, which hurts a lot on single target. The Shadow Fiend might be a target if he goes mid. But this is Alina core now. There's no doubt about it. The question is now, what do we get as the as the fifth one? It has to be something really heavy. It's somewhere that has to be damaged by C-Deck. Eventually, but then again, they have a lot of scaling damage from their supports, and Spirit Breaker can do quite a bit in his own right. Honestly, I'd be okay if they just go for a really aggressive route and try to fight LGD before they access the late game power of a Shadow Fiend and Gyrocopter, because honestly, I don't think a single hero is really going to be comfortable and engaging against that unless they can just focus them down piece by piece but that would require them to already have a significant advantage so i think the storm spirit would have been a reasonable pick for them the last for lgd it's going to be an io the gyrocopter is mostly going to be the partner for this io but in general it's just going to be a nice hero to follow up the clockwork ganks yep so the io that means we also have like probably Gyrocopter and Shadow Fiend ganks coming in just by relocate. Not to mention that we have, like, of course, nice lightning support, HP, and mana wise for whatever he is tethered to. So, yeah, I kind of like the IO one. It, it was not really on my radar, I guess, but I, I can see it totally working out, yes. Yeah, for sure. As far as CDEX's last pick is concerned, nothing immediately comes to mind as far as. A great hero here. Um, in lane, it's going to be against the Clockwork, so the laning stage should be pretty smooth for C deck, so they can afford to be a little bit greedy with this, but it's going to be a Slark. I like this pick just in general. LGD don't have very good lockdown for a Slark. Pounce keeps him safe from Clockwork nine times out of ten. That leaves just the lift from Rubik or whatever Rubik can steal, and so I think that the aggressive Slark is a good way to go. If C deck can get the ball rolling this very well, could be a victory for them. Yeah, I mean the Slark has great, great potential, but there's so much that can stop him at, at this point. Like, there's also so much damage that still goes through his ultimate. It's not like Shadow Fiend and Gyrocopter only have something that actually requires them to see the Slark. So, there's still a call down, there's still raises, there's still so much that actually even goes through the ultimate. So, if he pops that ultimate when he's already low, then he might even die in it. It's... To be honest, it's 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 a very high risk C deck takes, but I mean, you know, high risk, high wins, I guess, high stakes, high wins, whatever the saying is in English. Um, let's just introduce them really, uh, really fast. And surprise, surprise, Sila is not playing Shadow Fiend. Like yeah, wow. in the first game, it was a maybe Shadow Fiend as well, so they <laughs> do have that flexibility. Yeah, both of them like the hero, and I mean, I, I think LTD had like, did they have hundred uh, percent Shadow Fiend? In all five games now? Mm -hmm. Or was it four? Yep, that is correct. It's been all five of them. Oh, you had geez. maybe Silar, 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 maybe. Yeah, so it was. it's a two, three ratio. Anyway, so I introduced him really fast. Silar this time on the Gyro Cup that we have Xiao 8 playing the Rubik. Uh, the IO that clears out with the Shadow Fiend at the moment, some trees. Is MOY on the IO, and we just mentioned him maybe on the Shadow Fiend. Bounty Hunter pretty much sees all of that. And of course, the last one is Yao on the Clockwork. Who's going to be in the offlane? And Garter is going to be playing on that Bounty Hunter. The heroes up at the top of the rune spot. It's going to be Shiki playing on the Lina towards the mid lane. Keegan going to be playing the Witch Doctor. Aggressive on the Slark. And XZ playing on the Spirit Breaker. Yep. And I'm really curious how that Spirit Breaker is, is doing. Like, they need that early game advantage. They have the early game advantage. Uh, unless, of course, they go versus the Gyrocopter, where it's always a bit iffy because most people underestimate how much damage comes out of a Rocket Barrage. Um, we really have to see how this one is going. And the second one for my spotlight is really how well the Slark is doing. If the Slark gets somehow shut down and their solo physical core does not really work out and, and the Lina doesn't make the greatest transition, then um, 
yeah, that's that's my biggest fear of this draft. Bounty Hunter in the mid, same build we see all the time. Just some consumables and that Orb of 1M. The Shadow Fiend kind of knows this already. He's like, yeah, I know you're around. And well, there is, there it is. Actually, there's the slow even coming in by the Lina. Not much more, but of course the right clicks and everything is absolutely real. So he's going to take quite some damage down to 180 HP. But the Courier just brought him a self, I think, yes. And Ping, Ping Gao. Kali. You know, we'll be stuck here for a little bit, but hopefully it's not going to be too long. Um, yeah, with that self flying out, Shadowfiend should be safe to sit in this mid lane a little while longer, but already Lena's flexing her muscles. If either of these heroes is going to die, it's probably going to be the Shadowfiend if he gets caught up by another Light Strike array, especially once more levels start coming out and Dragon Slave and Laguna Blade eventually is there. Although Double Raise from the Shadow Fiend is potent at the moment, the only setup they have for that is the Rubik, and I don't think Rubik is going to be leaving this bottom lane anytime soon. Yep, okay, then, well, the Unpulse is coming. There is Rubik Haras just on, on the Spirit Breaker, that's, that's all that's coming out in this lane, but Spirit Breaker, well, he doesn't really care too much about the Rubik Haras, unless, of course, the a gyrocopter comes in with a rocket barrage. That's that's like the only potential we see. Uh, the clockwork tries to go for that cox harass on the Slark, burning some of his mana and of course some HP. But that didn't really work out at, at this point. The bounty hunter seems to be in the mid, sitting there, just going for the harass on the shadow fiend who has like no regeneration whatsoever. Uh, is there something coming out? Yes, there is a bottle uh, right now. That is the IO bottle actually. Yeah, in theory, they could give the bottle to the Shadow Fiend, but that's way too much to sacrifice for the Wisp. Bounty Hunter is going to be sitting here, and actually, oh, they are going to give him, at the very least, some Tangos, but this might get the Courier sniped, and it might cost them oh, the Bounty Hunter is leaving. Well. Oh, he's leaving mm. the second. The absolute second the Courier was there. So that was his chance to actually get it. But, oh, look look at this. The Courier actually makes a little pause at a Tier 2 tower, and the Shadow Fiend goes for it. Like, who needs a courier to deliver it? You just, you know, go for it. And I think they the actually IO... give the bottle from the IO. So maybe he's going to have to pay that forward later on in the game and pass it back. But speaking of the IO, getting charged out after being spotted, but a nice uh, jump away and a lift onto XE is going to buy them enough space to save that IO from being first blooded. Yeah, nice reaction by the Rubik there. Just lifting him up and then making an end to this because the IO, of course, always in trouble. IO is nothing but a light, little light bulb with zero armor. And that is, of course, a big problem. If the Bounty Hunter already has an initiation on you and then the Spirit Breaker comes in, that's, of course, really, really bad news. The Clockwork, well, use... Well, speaking of Spirit Breaker, mid lane maybe gets jumped. They have Bash. Do they even need the Bash? And they'll find it. <laughs> that's first blood drawn by Shiki with one more auto attack. The 17% coming in. Very, very... Nice, of course, for them. But I don't, I don't even think they they needed it. You're right. I, I think that was really just down to right click. So the first blood coming in, the tangos for the shadow fiend not doing what they were supposed to do, and in the end, well, he's he's going down. We have now the IO in the mid as well. He gets his bottle, and actually even gets the bottle refreshed, uh, just because that's how it still is after years of Dota, which is a known bug now. It's it's called mechanic. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. You'll get the stack on the medium camp too, and the IO should be able to keep on stacking for the Shadow Fiend. It'll give him some nice catch-up gold even after um, falling prey to that Spirit Breaker gank. Up in top lane, Yao is going to be dancing a little bit with the Witch Doctor. If the Witch Doctor gets isolated with no boots, that could be a pretty easy kill for Clockwork. That is, if he had points into Battery Assault. Yeah. Unfortunately for the Clock, now he doesn't. Not yet. He doesn't. He doesn't get too much XP out of this whole lane, and he went for two points in, in Rocket Flare because. He thought, he thinks, I guess, that, that that is his only way to actually do some nice harass and, and get some, some right clicks in. Um, well, let's see where this one is going with only Rocket Flare. Like, I think one point in, in Battery Soul is something you definitely need. However, well, they try to do something. Actually, it latches, and now the damage is coming in the right clicks. They have to be real. He has nothing really to do against it, but the problem is also, can they actually follow up on the tower? I don't think so, and no. They just go back. He's using self, so that's pretty much a reset thing. But it showed the potential. If there was some earlier harass, some, some more essence stacks on the Slark, for example, this might have actually been a kill. And exactly what a Slark needs in this game to, you know, really get going in oh, the mid. mid lane. Oh, the Lina really wants that Shadow Fiend. There's the stun, but she's under the tower. And look at the IO heal. It's absolutely unreal. Actually pumping him full HP and mana. So there kicks the IO in. That's why you, you love the hero. 
Yeah, with the salve, Lena will be able to stick in lane without much HP lost after going for that dive, so I suppose no harm, no foul. Um, but now the Shadow Fiend's starting to pick up a little bit more momentum. Still getting doubled up in CS by the Lena, but at the very least he has some sort of fallback mechanism. Zhao 8 has been spotted by the Bounty Hunter, and it looks like they might be interested in going for a Spirit Breaker gank over here. Uh, Spirit Breaker yep. for now hasn't left the lane. That's the problem, like, you can't really go for Spirit Breaker gank. Uh, number one reason is he has no mana. Like even if using that one stick charge, he doesn't get up to a hundred. So charging that rubric is not possible. And the jackcopter would have seen it. And if if you charge, you see the angle, and then everybody knows. Oh my god, he's probably charging, uh, either on me or the guy behind me. So yeah, that that was too obvious to actually happen. There is some warding happening around this now, but it's kind of unfortunate because that fresh observer ward is directly on top of a sentry. So. That's not gonna take long till this one is dewatered unless they really don't spot it out. Witch talk, saying hello to that gyro, uh, gyrocopter, I say. <laughs> Clockwork, I mean. But yeah, overall, this like has free farm. And that's what it comes down to. That's exactly what Seedek needs. That's why the, the Witch talk is also nicely sitting with him in the lane. Then again, so does Silo. The gyrocopter is getting just as much, if not more, than the Slark is up in the top lane. So, honestly, this is really close to even, but the Shadow Fiend dropping low will take a stack, and that's going to propel his gold towards whatever his next major item is going to be. He's starting to catch up to the Lina, although it's not through his own work, oh, but the Ayas. Curry Snipe from Gardar? No, he doesn't do it, because he sees the others. Actually, he could go on that Shadow Fiend. Like, right now, right here, um, it probably would not be enough, especially no. now that the Io has a full bottle again, as well as Tangos. He could heal him, but if the Lina would see it, for example, and she is, she is at the right level for really just drive-by shooting, gangster style, Laguna Blade out of the window of your limo, like just pure pure. But now he's full HP again. Just the the wisp is just too strong in healing. Yeah, it is just a level 2 bounty hunter, no access to shuriken, and really going for solo kills isn't a possibility in the slightest for Gardar. He needs some way to catch back up in this game. Maybe he'll soak some experience when Spirit Breaker gets 6 and XD starts roaming, but, I um, mean, yeah, the case for the bounty hunter this game, and throughout the entire series, has really been about the same. Attempted pounce up top, not gonna connect. The Clockwork will just be able to walk that one off. Yep, so. They try, they still try on the clockwork. The clockwork actually now going back, uh, which is a surprise to me. I thought he's gonna stay till level 6 in his lane, but talking about staying, uh, the Spirit Breaker did not stay in his lane. He actually wanted to charge the, the Shadow Fiend in the mid, but they kind of call it off. Now, there is some little war. Oh, okay, that, that is a very, very awkward pause because it's the second the Rubik <laughs> sees <laughs> the Bounty Hunter and now is. I don't know, please chat translate for me. And don't write Ching Chang Chong. That's not the translation. That's definitely not the translation. Um, unfortunately, I don't see the radius of these wards at the moment, but I don't think they see each other, so there's no de-warding going on. But we have another sentry. It's funny how many sentries we have. Like, one, two, three sentries here. There's another one. It's kind of getting all sentry here in this jungle. And there go, and let's see what the Rubik does. Like, is there a call on LTD's side? There's the Fate Ball. Not use Telekinesis yet, because the rest of the team is coming in, and this is this is exactly what I've been talking about. He might run from one into the other, and there is the dust. So, I'm really sorry, Bounty Hunter. That pause was, of course, enough time for LTD to plan this elaborate kill. Or the elaborate plan to get the kill, whatever you want to call it. That was very unfortunate, that pause. Uh, even if they didn't pause, I think they still killed the bounty hunter there. It would have been um, just fast reactions. I think that uh, yeah, it would have been pretty straightforward. We're nearing level six for the clockwork and the spirit breaker both. But speaking of the clock, there's a TPM from Melina with a double damage rune. This is an easy kill on Yao with the Laguna Blade and just a couple more right clicks. They'll crater him, and now the Rubik also needs to be very careful. Joe White is going to get Nether struck up, although there is a call down. It's not going to save his life. A double kill for the Lina, and it's not over yet. Silo's going to eat a double damage right click, survives on 150 HP. And then we'll salve up in mid lane. The Slark gonna pounce forward onto maybe with a little bit of dark pack damage. It is going to be close, but not quite. The orb damage will kill off the Slark <laughs> in kind. The Io coming in at the nick of time. 
The Light Bob is at the moment the MVP of this match. He's the only reason that Shadow Fiend is still decent in the game. He's also the reason now the Slark left his lane to actually grab an easy kill on the Shadow Fiend. Under normal circumstances, that would have been an easy kill. But yeah, him coming in, healing him up, then the raises plus the spirits just killing him off. That is, of course, perfect play by them. So LGD really making sure that this Shadow Fiend will have decent farm and will have a good stand in this game. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, the game slowed down a little bit, but now that we do have the Nether Strike and the Hookshot available, these offliners can start moving, and I think Yao needs to set up some sort of kills if LGD want to find a good foothold in this game. They found some nice farm for the Shadow Fiend, but even though he's CSing well, Delina's just been involved in so many kills that she's out farming when it comes to the raw net worth chart almost has a thousand gold advantage yeah that's that's a good thing i mean I, I told you in the draft i was afraid of like the the cores not not getting much or like the lack of like traditional cores where you can straight put your finger on okay that's the game plan etc so that's not really happening at the moment the slug was at least till that mid little yeah excursion was was doing fine also fine is of course the spirit breaker i mean he is Relatively early level 6, he was involved and in now those two kills, almost level 7. He has at least the PTs and a magic one finished, can now go into something else if he gets some farm. Lina, you already mentioned it, is doing well. So we have the next time crucial levels coming out pretty much on both teams because we have the Witch Dog getting level 6. The Bounty Hunter and the Rubik, however, they're really lost when it comes to experience and everything right now. It's not their focus. They really pushed the Rubik on a 5th position here um, and he lives and breathes it. Curry is going to be flying out with a mechanism up for the Shadow Fiend as well as a smoke for the team. This could very easily set up some nice rotations for the LGD squad. They do still have to work around this dire observe ward up on the high ground, so they should know that the smoke is flying out shortly and it has been delivered. So this rotation probably is expected by C Deck. Yep. So level 6 now on the Witch Dog. He has a TP, he could go in a fight if anything would break out, but is there any. A any candidate location for a fight anyway it doesn't really look any team is really interested in it we have a gyrocopter but he's pretty much also camped by a wisp just in case something is happening the wisp skipping the boots completely at this point he's really just hovering really slowly over the ground here but he got to earn and of course everything you need to just heal except for a mech and that's of course very nice we have a smoke Oh, clockwork. They have vision on it. Oh, but he misses the hook shot. And of course, that's now easy going because the Slark. Oh, actually missing. He's just jumping through the cocks, getting pushed back on the other side. Of course, that's also a bummer. There's a bounty hunter. We have no track yet, but there is the charge. Does he see it? Does he go for it? I don't think so because that would be a bit too risky. Uh, the Slark is trying to get in, but also just to bait out any spell. The Lina, Dragon's Life, just driving him out. Yeah, that was a little bit awkward. Both teams going to miss their initiations. Now it's LGD's turn to just barrel down this mid lane, should they want to do that. But it really does seem like neither that of these teams want ward. to fight. Like, did you see that ward right here? Like, I mean, if you put it here, it's out of the tower range. But that is pretty much the tower range, like, for, for wards. So, yeah. Easy going. Yeah, I don't think it's going to matter that much in the grand scheme of things. A little bit of gold lost, but... Um, yeah, even so, it really seems like both of these teams just want to sit back and wait until their cores have a little bit more farm before taking the engagement to the enemy side. Yep, definitely. So, well, at the moment, it's really, except for this, uh, I don't know, the, the clockwork saying hello with the hookshot and missing it, no really, not really any initiative by, by both teams. It's, they know it's the fifth game of a best of five, there's a lot of pressure on both of them. But let's see, maybe they want to go here on the Lina. Ah, the oh, there's the hookshot. This one is actually, yeah, completely on target. Does he actually get anything off at the moment? He's still alive. One more right click. Does he get his Laguna Blade in? No, he does not. But, well, look at the clockwork. He got so much damage. Actually, does he... Nah, that's that's completely enough because that Witch Dog, that's only level 1 Maledict. There's even a relocate into another position uh, back that brings him even back and faster to farm... So yeah, nice strike there by LGD. Yeah, definitely so that Lena up until this point was 3-0 and zero and really doing quite well for himself. Sadler up top going to post up onto the Slark, but Aggressive's going to survive and has his ultimate still, so actually killing him off is not really a possibility. Let's take a second to talk about this 4-staff up for Lena. Honestly, I don't like it all that much. I think I'd much rather have seen a Yules or even just a straight-up yeah. Ags. Yep, 
like the four staff, yes, it gives you some mobility. Um, to be honest, I think it's 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 due to the fact that they have a, a clockwork. Like mm, under normal sure. circumstances, Elena would never ever ever go for a four staff, not as like a a first mention worthy item. But you play against the clockwork. You can only hope that there's not any follow up CC on you. But talking about CC and everything now, the question is, does it actually come through? There's a TP. There's a nice charge onto here. That Rubik is already down. Laguna played even use for it. The, well, the Requiem into so many people, but not not everybody is impressed by it. Now the call line comes in and everything's falling apart for C deck. Taking so much damage. The Spirit Breaker is gonna be taken down. The Slark is already pouncing away, and this is a one for four trade. Like it was so much damage all of a sudden, especially then the second AoE spell coming in by the Gyrocopter. Yeah, absolutely. The IO working overtime to keep that Shadow Fiend alive. And it started out so cleanly for a C deck, but as soon as the Requiem went to unwound, things fell off the wheels very quickly. The Slark wasn't able to unload any damage really aggressive. It's sitting on 2000 gold, that's nice and all, but that's not going to help you fight in the immediacy of the engagement. By the way, just, just a uh, short question to you, Krennis, because we had that in the earlier games, like the use of those big cooldowns, like the big, the f uh, the the finger of Fu or Laguna Lols played. It's, I don't know. This was a Rubik that was on what 200 HP, something like that, mm -hmm. and Laguna played is getting spent on him. Like the Shadow Fiend, I think, was in a range where you could actually Laguna played at him, and he would have died. Because he was responsible for most of the damage. I mean, that would have still been the gyrocopter call down. But that's what I'm always asking myself. Even uh, that, like sometimes these big cooldowns just go into small targets. Because what would have? I don't think that Rubik would have done so much in that fight. Was he really worth that, like Winner Blade? Probably not. But hindsight always is 2020. So see that are going to lose quite a lot of ground here. Tier one tower and top lane gonna fall to the Shadow Fiend and LGD are getting a lot of farm. We're so very close to a BKB on the SF, and BKB on the Gyrocopter won't be too far behind that, only about 1500 gold, till he has that item. And if you compare that to the inventories of C-Deck, you've committed to this 4-staff on Lina, and Slark hasn't bought anything. They just need more time, and I'm not sure they're going to be able to find it. CX yeah. heroes rely on getting kills. The, the biggest problem is like that both cores, it's not just LTD pushed their Shadow Fiend through by the help of the IO, it's also that the Gyrocopter was mostly like really the the position one farmer, like space was created for him, they were fighting 5 on 4, sometimes even just repelling C deck on, on towers and whatnot, but now there's a rotation, oh this is gonna be good, the clockwork, finding probably the worst target right here, there's the witch dog, he's not gonna get anything off this fight, he's still alive, but the raises, well, and the right clicks, he's the first target to go down, but Alina is trying his, yeah, trying her luck on the clockwork, it's a 1-1-1 one, one, one trade right now, the AoE, everything is coming down, there is a relocate, bringing the gyrocopter pretty much back, well, the Spirit Packer is also dying there under the tower. Everybody was falling back except for the Rubik. He was found by Slark and the Bounty Hunter. We still have two of them coming in and there's the go. There's the ultimate even coming out. On what do they focus? The Light Strike Array completely off here at the moment. He has no cooldown whatsoever. And the Io, beautiful body blocking right here. But now I think they have to stop Pursuit because if Lina turns around, you can actually blow up that Io really fast. And, well, the Slark is coming back with the Shadow Blade. There's the opening, but... Beautiful timing on that tether, just slipping away. He is supposed to be, you know, the fishy and the the slippery one, but that Io is the real fish on the patch here. Definitely, and without Boots, MMY's positioning inside these fights has been immaculate. Uh, Bootsless Io should be dying in these fights when you're dealing with like a Slark, a Spirit Breaker, a Lina. They can very easily burst him down, but MMY just seems to be finding these nice little angles, nice little spots where he can keep his cores alive and. Really, has just been playing very well. Silar got so much value out of Rocket Barrage inside that last fight, and honestly, I thought that that relocate and that pathing coming out from the Gyrocopter and Io after the fact would have gone poorly, but yeah, the Slark and Lina just couldn't stand up against him. It's going to slightly tip the scales in LGD's favor, although all things considered, it's a fairly even trade, but the biggest issue is that the status quo remains where the Shadow Fiend is getting really big items and C deck don't have very much to deal with it. You have a full BKB for him, and until you have an Aghanim Scepter on the lean, the physical damage isn't going to be enough. 
Yep, and the pings are coming out. They LGD already established vision around Roshan Pit as well as like protection against anything else, which means they see the bounty hunter in pretty much every key position right now. Oh, but in the mid there's a fight breaking out. The clockwork initiated again on the witch dog. There's a four star forward by the Lena, but he's down nevertheless. And the call down is gonna slow down the Lena. Now she's really, really in trouble. The second one doesn't really hit, but look at all this damage. He's just so fast. Now the IO is helping him as well, and that's the second kill right there and all that happened while they were also like doing something in on uh, the tier 1 tower bottom it's gonna be a deny sure but in the end who cares like if every tower on the way to the throne is denied and you still win it's a win yeah that bottom tower push coming out from maybe almost cost the OGG that fight but the bounty hunter even though he tried for the shuriken it didn't connect before the shadow fiend was able to tp oh, didn't even have to commit to the BKB, but breaker. Yeah, like, they're trying for the lift. Can Joey actually get in range with Tranquil Boots? He might be fast enough, but now that they've taken damage, they're going to be forced to use a relocate. But now relocating in the Rock Brush damage, and Xe is going to bite the dust. Nothing yeah. he can do. And for those who wonder why he did not charge away, well, the Ruik was waiting for it. I, I don't think he would have ever used the Telekinesis there before. They just wanted to, like, really give vision for the relocate and everything. Because the second you charge, you have that, like, tiny little delay, and that's exactly the delay uh, the Rubik would have used and just lifted you up the second you charge away. So, that's the third kill in a series of, I don't know, very weird fights for c uh, I thought in the beginning, maybe they really get it through because they had, like, nice early levels on, on certain roles and everything, but this, the lineup c has is supposed to win till... 25 30 minutes with the whole roaming and and whatnot and the whole effort of like Laguna plating someone with a track kill on top of it and then later on like LGD is, is you know tipping over and taking the steering wheel in this game but the problem is LGD was winning already like this early game now it just gets worse in my opinion for C deck but let's see we have a shadow plight I want to find someone like for example the IO just focus right now on him well there's the pounds relocate nothing is really coming through but the BKB of the Gyrocopter is on and a beautiful hook shot here everybody's just getting pushed out and the stock of course has his ultimate but the problem is everybody's in front of him and one more right click well he's actually regening HP here on the way so for now they are alive but wow this is so much effort just for a little IO yeah, a lot committed, but then again, they also forced out the BKB charge coming out from Silo, so in any case, there is a little bit of traded <clears throat> value. They're going to get lift up onto aggressive, caught inside the cog. Yeah, it's going to be focused down by Light Ray and a Laguna Blade. The Spirit Breaker charges forward, but on too little HP to go for any more. They force out yet another Black King Bar charges. C deck might be able to chase forward with four staff in Light Strike Array. Shiki's going in, falls deep on the Siler with the focus damage coming out from the Slark. It's just not enough. The Island's joining the fray again. Siler eventually will fall, but the damage is mostly done. They'll get another stun onto XE. XE still surviving. One right click from the Shadow Fiend will do him in, but it's a team wipe for C deck as they completely take away LGD. Okay. Now it gets interesting. A lot of those kills were with Trek, so nice tasty gold there coming in for uh, c -Dick. Like, the entire gold swing is 5k. This is 5k gold straight on the hand, cash, no taxes whatsoever for c -Dick. That's absolutely, absolutely amazing. This is exactly what they needed. Otherwise, that, that would have been really a grim day and, a, and a, a very bad last game for them. But LGD, now they lost a lot of their advantage. Like, looking into the graphs, it's right now updating... Yes, from a 3k advantage, 5 down, into a 2k advantage for c -Deck. That's uh, a mini comeback of sorts, right? Yeah, it is. It translates into some pretty important items for the team. You have an Agnum Scepter completed up for the Lina. Spirit Breaker goes back for a catch-up Midas, and Slark is going to finish his Black King Bar. This makes the next couple of fights a lot easier for them. With BKBs on both the Shadow Fiend and the Gyrocopter, having an Agnum Scepter Laguna Blade is going to help so much. And granted, it's not at its full capacity yet. It's not a level 16 Lina. But even so, that's 675 damage right off the bat. It's going to be dropping somebody down to about half, which is absolutely amazing. And uh, yeah, the Slark is going to be a force to be reckoned with. This game got, as you said, a lot more interesting. Yep, right now it's 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 very, very interesting. Like such a swing, just one big fight and everything can just turn. Of course, they couldn't really capitalize on anything because that fight before, like the initiation on the IO, cost them already so much. And I was surprised that out of all these resources they they still pulled a five man wipe on LGD. Of course it was just not enough steam in the machine right there just to 
yeah, go for Roshan. But talking about Steam, they might actually have enough here because jumping on a gyrocopter, that is a 9 second BKB. Oh, there's initiation here on the Rubik. Everything's on. Getting the Rubik out already, that would be just amazing. But he's still somehow alive, and there's the Hutch initiation by the Clockwork. And look at the gyrocopter going full ham here on the Witch Dog. So there's no way he gets anything up. Requiem, so much damage right now, right here. And there's the Spirit Breaker also going down. It's a 2 for 1. I have no idea how that Rubik really survived in the end. They really want to get that Bounty Hunter. If he uses something... Uh, no. I think I think everybody is, is sort of... Yeah, getting away somehow. But it's it's only a 2-for-1 trade. It's crazy. And it's a great 2-for-1 trade for LGD. That IO ate the Laguna Blade coming out from Lina. And really at this point, IO can't survive that. Um, no matter what, they trade for the mid Lina and the offlane Spear Breaker. And... Really, that double mech kill coming out from the tether onto the Rubik is what turned things around for LGD. If Rubik wasn't there, things could have gone smoother for C-Deck. They had to commit so hard to try to go for that kill, but anything short of killing off the IO isn't going to work out for them. The IO is constantly healing up targets and making it impossible for C-Deck to get clean initiations in a 5v5 skirmish. Tier 2 tower in mid going to fall immediately after the fact, and now LGD are back on the warpath. Yep. I mean, it's not like a full comeback or anything, but of course, it's it's a nice kill, especially getting the, the Lina core down there as well and capitalizing on it. That's the dif big difference between those two fights. It was less of a trade, more of a step forward to actually go, uh, for example, on high ground after like, I don't know, a plus 30 minutes, uh, 30 minutes plus fight. Um, then through the mid. Now the high ground would be the next step for LGD if they really find something. Then again, we also have Roshan. So Roshan... In these matches, like high stake matches, Roshans are always relatively late. So, yeah. <laughs> I wonder when this Roshan is gonna happen. So far, we never had like one of those big Roshan fights that were really like a turnaround with a 5 on 5 because most of the teams went instantly back uh, when they just had the idea of the other team coming to fight. So, nobody really wants to fight uh, in the rush pit. And if you think about it, I mean, I think LGD would win any Roshan fight just because of the AoE potential. Yeah, and CDEX lack thereof. Witch Doctor's ultimate's pretty good. It is level 2, and they also have a Lina, which is okay, but yeah, it just doesn't really compare at face value. We're almost sitting on a butterfly for Silar. Um, he's still missing the Talisman Invasion and the Quarterstaff, but has enough money for the Quarterstaff at the very least, and well, we now have Ghost Scepter up for MMY, as if he wasn't hard enough to kill already. This is going to mean that they probably have to commit a Laguna Blade if they want to bring MMY down at the beginning of the engagement. Yep, so at the moment everybody fell back into the farming mode. Uh, the advantage, we, we talked about it, that was a 6k swing into that smaller trade of a 3k swing. We can talk about a game that's completely even. Still, uh, draft-wise, just the, the choice of heroes, the choice of cores, um, it's of course very, very interesting for LGD because uh, compare the, the network of Stark, it's like 11k. Um, I'm, I'm surprised it's, it's even that much, but he needs... I don't know, like, the Scotty would really be a nice item on him, just all the survivability uh, coming out for the Slark. And then the Lina core, well, yes, a Garner Scepter is there, but once she used the 4 stuff, for example, she's just a play ball to whatever happens. Like, any kind of CC, she can't really do anything against it. There's no BKV, there's no Yule Scepter, no nothing. She can't really remove anything that's coming out there. LGD? First I thought they're gonna go in Roshan, but they're actually just waiting because they have a mid kill here if the Bounty Hunter moves there. At the moment they don't have the vision, but he just walked right by the sentry, lifted up, dusted up, and no hope for Gardner. He's gonna eat one raise, and although the mech will delay, it's only going to do that. Clockwork will find himself the kill. Yep, and with that they also kinda cancel that that top push on a tier one tower. That would have been of course some some nice gold for uh for C Deck just for the grabs, but it's not really coming out. The Slark actually here on lane are uh, going into... Okay, that's interesting. Now there comes the Rocket. And he's going into the Shadow Plate, really trying to get out. But the problem is the Rocket is going to follow him here. And there's also Alina. We have no Hookshot ready. That's another 20 seconds. We have to wait there. But yeah, it, everything should be just fine. Yeah, the tier 2 tower in bottom lane might be under a little bit of heat coming out from LGD. With the mech up for the Shadow Fiend, the BKB is available for both of them. Uh, the Gyro and the SF, they should be able to go for it. There's going to be a leap away from Aggressive, he'll keep himself safe, but um, yeah, this is a very track. scary situation. Yeah, yeah, the track, of course, is always nice to have on the Rubik. Now you see exactly what's going on on the other side of the tower. The Lina is pretty much your walking ward, and it comes for free. The Slark coming here from the other side, but 
the blinks already coming out. There's the hookshot initiation on the Lina. Where is the full stuff? Nope. On the other side, bounce back, and there's just no way. So Lina down, 55 seconds. This is the end of this tier 2 tower. Yeah, not a hope for this tier 2. And Cedek, this game is starting to get out of hand. It really doesn't seem like there's much that they can do about maybe in Silar. There is a gem on the Rubik now, too, to make matters worse. Their map control, or lack thereof, is going to continue to progress in a downward spiral. At the moment, there is a Dire Observer Ward inside the Middle River area, and a Lane Ward despite our rotations up towards the top, and one down and bottom, but oh, the buyback, they're going to go for this. They want to contest this Roshan, but... Ooh, let's it's see how this fight breaks out. Spirit Breaker is going to cancel his charge, but gets in range with the left. Hold back in. They're going to cogs him in with the Rock Brush. Spirit Breaker down. Aggressive goes under the back lines. Kills off Xiao Wei, but maybe at the cost of his own life. He has the BKB and is trying to run forward for the IO. MMY still surviving by some miracle. Will heal up Silar a little bit more aggressive. Is back up at about 100% HP. Silar is isolated from the rest of his team. Is maybe unwinds the Requiem. Spirit Breaker charges right through it, trying to kill off this Wisp, but he just can't do it. The Paralyzing Cast bounces through. It's going hit maybe and yell a handful more times this aggressive goes for another round onto the clockwork two for two as they chase for even more the slark has a little bit of track movement speed it's going to bounce in the silar but the rock brush damage might be a little too much if they're not careful there is no laguna but it was previously spent inside this fight so it looks like cdeck are going to have to pull out aggressive although he wants it i think he wants it maybe a little too much lgd are going to back off and it looks like two for two is all it's going to be well, I mean, that was so goddamn close. Uh, to be honest, Zedek was here on the brink of making a hilarious, insane, and very good fight. Because that gyrocopter was low, like 10-15%, something like that. Oh, there's a gem on the ground. Oh, Slark! That would have been just amazing. Like, dropping the stick, replacing it with the gem. Easy going right there. But it's not gonna happen. Anyway, and also the IO was super low just by the Slark and everything, but didn't get any collateral damage. So uh, the IO, as well as the Gyrocopter, they healed themselves up to like 60, 70, 80% HP and then rejoined the fight. And therefore, see, they had to retreat. So the fight was really like completely on the edge for LGD. If they would have lost one of those guys, the entire thing would have fallen apart. Talk about falling apart, Roshan is doing that right now. That's going to be an Aegis for maybe with the double damage rune. There was no hope for C-Duck to take that fight. Now LGD can go again. The BKBs are starting to wear thin. Six seconds on the Shadow Fiend, seven seconds on the Gyrocopter. But even with that small window of magic community, it should be enough for them to threaten high ground at the very least. Their team fight is just a tad bit stronger, especially inside these closed quarters. Yep, and now comes really the, the thing I'm mostly worried about is like the, the counter push of C-Deck. It's not the most amazing thing. They can, yeah, they throw out the coconuts. There is a dragon slave, sure. Um, but besides that, it's, it's not really the right thing. Slark is trying to be invisible and, and fancy coming from the side. But now that they have a gem on the Rubik, for example, they know when the Slark is coming in and he can't save, save himself, for example, again in, into like the Shadow Blade's cooldown. He has to use his ultimate, by the end of his ultimate he's either full HP and still good fighting or it's not really working. Oh, that was a nice force stuff by the Lina trying to get the, the Shadow being in a good position but well there's a rocket. Nobody's taking care of it and they rather take care of the tier 3 tower. So that's that and the question is now LGD back or LGD continues? That was so close to a super clutch four staff by the Lina, almost landing Light Strike Ray after the fact. And if they did, maybe they can take the Aegis off of maybe. But even without the Shadow Fiend's first life, his second life is absolutely terrifying. LGD can stick around and maybe go for a little bit more. The track is going to be annoying for them, and currently there are two members of the LGD side that are tracked, but the opening really doesn't get much better for this. Currently, XZ sitting outside of the um, dire base. Might find a good angle for a charge here. Let's see. Yeah, that, I mean, the Spirit Breaker is, is doing what he can do, right? I mean, he has a Midas rolling, so that's that's cool for him. He can use it on a big creep right right here, right now. He can even push tier 1, but I think the action is already going on here. The Shadow Fiend super ballsy, obviously, because he has the Aegis. He can easily work without the Slark. Well, he's, I don't know, looking there. Maybe he wants to get a Pounce. There's no Sentry Ward. No, nothing, which means they have nice high crown vision right now. They see everything that's going on, and look at the tracks. The tracks are just going forth and back to Slark. Oh, <laughs> this is what a stand up. Yeah, and it doesn't seem like it shows any sign of breaking anytime soon. The tracks will continue on either side, but Aggressive's going to be dropped very low, and the lift comes after the purge. He's going to go down with no buyback. 
He just bought out for a Scotty, if I'm not mistaken. No, he didn't even get that finish. Yeah, I was gonna need a Laguna Blade to the dome, but healed up by MMY is going to survive, and this is a disaster for C deck. They're going to lose one, if not two, sets of barracks. Yeah, they're just gonna continue this. Like, there's. Yeah, no buyback on the Stark. This is so bad news. Like, it's a 5 and 4 situation. Enough creeps still left there. The ages. You can every tank almost everything. The IO still has. Well, Witch one Doctor Earth. sold everything for eggs. Q, oh, okay. he needs this to work out well. They're going to catch out the Bounty Hunter. He will survive, but they still have vision with the track. They're going to throw a 4. The Witch Doctor Death Ward goes for a little bit, but cancelled out by Yao. It doesn't do near enough. The Shadow Fiend kills off the Bounty, and this is. Good game, well played, and congratulations to LGD. Wow, okay. I mean, that initiation on the Slark was amazing. Like, the telekinesis came in the pounds with no dark pack on, and the, say, the hookshot gave the other 2.5 something seconds or 3 seconds done uh, to just, yeah, kill him right there. With the ultimate, everything would have been fine. He would have been. I don't know, maybe vulnerable to whatever comes out by the Shadow Fiend, as in raises and, and the cooldown, but yeah. Him not going there and surviving was just instantly the end of the game. LGD knew they have the advantage and right there they just win this game. That was very interesting. To be honest, I like the fourth game better than the fifth one. But the fact is LGD, they remain yeah, the favorite team, obviously. They are a TI team. Losing against C-Deck, that would have been a blow to them. I think Moral and those people say like, oh, they're not going to play serious. Yes, Chinese people always play serious. They are very proud of... of their playstyle and everything so pride is definitely a factor anyway guys uh thanks for watching um the tournament doyo cup is starting right now uh as well here on the same channel uh the games got a bit postponed because of the i say the g league uh, grand finals so culture and grandis will take over the first series and then i'm coming back uh after a meeting and keep casting for you guys till the very very end so thanks for tuning in my name is heflamog i'm casting here with grandis we know statsman we can mention but of course yeah it would be great of course if you show some support for for Hefla tv if you like what what we do here and other than that if you like it or not you can always come and visit and watch the next games are coming soon doyo tv cup is starting pretty much right after this so be right back guys